VOA News. President Trump has issued a strong warning to Iran that continues to resonate. Associated Press Washington correspondent Sagar Magadi reports from the White House. The president's warned Tehran in all caps to never ever threaten the U.S. again, saying it'll suffer consequences like few nations ever have. Iran's leader had earlier said America should understand war with his nation is the mother of all wars. Spokeswoman Sarah Sanders told Fox and Friends the president won't tolerate Tehran's rhetoric. The only person that is inciting anything is Iran. Earlier in the day at the Reagan Library, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo blasted Iran's Ayatollah Holas as hypocritical holy men who collect money while their people suffer. They seem more concerned with riches than religion. Sagar Magani at the White House. Monday afternoon, President Trump told a reporter he is, quote, not at all worried that uh, uh, that his tweet will Sunday night will provoke Iran. Mr. Trump also said Monday that contrary to media reports, he is, quote, very happy with the pace of ongoing negotiations with North Korea to end its nuclear weapons program. On Twitter, he noted that a rocket has not been launched by North Korea in nine months. Likewise, no nuclear tests. Japan is happy. All of Asia is happy. But the fake news is saying without ever asking me, always anonymous sources, that I am angry because it is not going fast enough. Wrong very happy. President Trump is considering taking away the security clearances of six former top intelligence and law enforcement officials because of their criticism of him. They include former CIA Chief John Brennan and ex-FBI Director James Comey. The White House accuses them of politicizing and making money from their public service. This is VOA News. Police in Toronto, Canada are seeking video and photos from people and businesses in the area where a man armed with a handgun killed two people and shot 13 others on Sunday. The shooting happened in the city's Greektown neighborhood. The two dead were an 18-year-old woman and a 10-year-old girl. The attack ended when the 29-year-old shooter, identified as Faisal Hussein of Toronto, died in an exchange of gunfire with police. City Councilor Mary Fregadekis found it hard to express her feelings about the shooting, which happened in the area she represents on the council. This is so heartbreaking. Uh, The victims and their loved ones are in my thoughts and prayers. I cannot imagine what they are going through. The pain, the loss. Witnesses said the shooter fired into restaurants and cafes while walking down the sidewalk of a busy street. Zimbabwe's Electoral Commission said Monday that all votes cast during the July 30th general election will count and will be secret. Correspondent Sebastian Mofu reports for VOA from Harare. The main opposition party, the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance, said it would embark on mass demonstrations Tuesday should the commission fail to meet MDC demands to ensure that every vote counts. The MDC says the Electoral Commission is trying to rig the vote for the ruling ZANU-PF party just as it allegedly did for the party during the rule of former President Robert Mugabe. MDC and Commission officials are expected to meet Tuesday to discuss the presidential ballot which the opposition says was designed by the Electoral Panel to give an unfair advantage to President Emerson Munanga Sebastian Mofu for VOA News, Harare. After years of political and economic instability scared tourists away from Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe's removal from the presidency at the end of 2017 is reported to have revived the tourism industry in Zimbabwe almost overnight. In Mozambique, sustainable farming methods are being promoted around the Gile National Reserve to counter the damage caused by the traditional slash-and-burn practice of creating new fields. Chinese officials are investigating a drug maker accused of making faulty rabies vaccines that thousands of children may have been injected with. The vaccine maker was accused of faking records. Officials are trying now to reassure the public. You can find more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world around the clock at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News.